He said he went to someone knowledgeable, and that person who's knowledgeable admit that makar has a negative connotation, except when it's used for Allah. Then we can't say it has a negative meaning. And then, how does he explain chapter 8, verses 43 to 44? And by the way, the lexical sources, I wasn't lying. Here it is, let me read to you. This is an online source that's provided by Muslims, and then Lane's Arabic English lexicon. Here's Lane's Arabic English lexicon. The Arabic word is makar. He practiced deceit, guile, desiring to do another afal, an abominable, or an evil action. Clytus Steinlayer without his knowing once it proceeded. So I didn't define the term, they're defining it. And this online root, it's called the Project Root, Quran Root Project, where it gives you the root words and their meanings. Here it is. Min kafra, to practice deceit or guile or circumvention, practice evasion or illusion, to plot, to exercise art or craft or cunning, act with policy, practice stratagem. Now, he said two things. He said that Allah is not given the name Makir. And how did he explain chapter 8, verses 43 to 44, which I'll read? He says there, Allah wasn't deceiving the Muslims. He was just helping them to be confident. He was giving them confidence. Now, let me correct you, Abe, that Makir is not a name for Allah. Yeah, that word Makir is not used for Allah. But let me read to you. This is now Dr. Mahmoud M. Ayub, the Quran and its interpreters, the House of Imran. He, he's got a volume on what the Muslim scholars of the past and present, how do they explain these passages? He asks the question, how the word makr, scheming or plotting, which implies, guys, this is him, the Muslim scholar, which implies deceitfulness or dishonesty could be attributed to God. So he's wondering, and the scholars wonder, how could makir, which implies deceitfulness or dishonesty, be attributed to God? It's page 165. He then quotes Ar-Razi, and he better know who Ar-Razi is, one of the greatest Muslim commentators of the Quran. And Ar-Razi stated, scheming, makir, is actually an act of deception aiming at causing evil. It is not possible to attribute deception to God. So like Shuaib, this Muslim is puzzled. You can't attribute deception to Allah because he's supposedly al-haq, but you're stuck with it. The Quran does attribute deceit to him. So what is this explanation? This is one of those words that are mutashabihat. Mutashabihat means it's unclear. Makr, which they all admit means deceit and lying and conniving. When it's applied to Allah, it has to be unclear. So notice they're begging the question. But here's what I want you to hear. I want you to hear what Ayub says. Ay Ayub quotes Qurtubi. Now notice what Qurtubi says. Pay attention because you said Makir is not used of Allah. Qurtubi observes that some scholars have considered the words best of schemers to be one of God's beautiful names. Oh, wow. The best of deceivers is one of the beautiful names of Allah. Thus one would pray, and they would even pray, O oh, best of schemers, khayrun makareen, deceive for me. But the translation says, scheme for me. Kurtubi also reports that the Prophet used to say, O oh Allah, scheme for me. Don't use makr against me, use it for me against those who deceive me. So you're wrong. The Muslims in the past used to call upon Allah Khairul Makarin and said Khairul Makarin is one of his names. And that's my first question. Why did you say it's not one of his names? Second question. Even the Muslim scholars mean the word does mean deceit, but they can't say it means that for Allah. And third question. Why did Allah show your prophet a dream that the number of the Meccans were fewer number? Because you said to give them confidence. You're telling me that Muhammad had no Iman? That his faith was so weak and the Muslim faith was so weak, they didn't think Allah was almighty. They thought Allah was too weak to give them power over against a larger number so that Allah had to lie and deceive to your prophet to give him confidence by making it look like there were fewer number. Why would God need to do that? Would you do that? Don't you trust Allah's almighty? So that even if there's 10,000 in front of you, if Allah speaks, you wouldn't have fear because you believe Allah's almighty. So why would Allah stoop to the level of deceiving your prophet? and making it seem like they're less in number to give them confidence. Are you saying that your prophet had no Iman? He didn't trust Allah was almighty enough, so Allah had to lie and scheme and deceive him? Please answer those questions. You said, Qurtubi said that uh, uh, there is the attributive name al makir Qurtubi didn't say al makir He said Khairul Makirin. Khairul Makirin is a different... You said that... Uh, no, I didn't. It's recorded. You, Let me correct you. you I said, Qurtubi said, Khairul Makirin is one of his names. That's yeah, what you I said, said so Khairul Makreen. Khairul Makreen is not the attributive name. Khairul Makreen is not the attributive name. Al Makir is attributive name. Al Makir is not there for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for God Almighty. Anywhere in Quran and Hadith, Al Makir is not there as the attributive name. So, for God, and you just uh, repeated what I said. Lane's dictionary says that Makar is deceiving. I said that Morid also says Makar is deceiving. And you said that scholars of Islam 
they are worried they are they, they cannot imagine how god can be market and even i was worried when you said that uh, allah is a market and i said that how can uh, no translation of uh, quran mentions makir ma makar or makir for uh, deceiving for uh, allah subhanahu wa taala and i just asked because of that i asked and uh, that what i said that makar alone is a negative meaning makar alone when it is used is negative meaning but if it comes in comparison like with god when it comes with comparison in comparison if it comes it becomes the countering effect of the evil makar countering that effect so you cannot translate deceiving for god almighty because it is countering effect now you say it is lens dictionary yes it is lens it is it is in lens dictionary but there are other dictionaries also lisanul arab it is also a dictionary lisanul arab gives this explanation there is a commentary of zamakshari zamakshari also gives this explanation there is a commentary of tabri also tabri also gives and i asked him why tabri because tabri is not reliable in the matters of hadith well yes tabri is not reliable in matter for this because he takes everything but he, tabri is reliable in the matter of language he is good in language so it, it is perfectly okay now you quoted surah al anfal chapter 8 verse number 30 surah al anfal verse number 8 verse number 30 also speaks about in comparison the word makar coming in comparison to the to the other to the other, other party waid yam turu bikal ladina kafaru liyusabitu ka aw yuqatilu ka aw yufriju ka wa yam turuna wa yam kurulla wa yam kurulla is for the non muslim wa yam kurulla is for the enemy wa yam kurulla and this is in comparison coming in with in comparison to that word so if it comes when it comes in comparison then it the meaning changes to countering the effect of makar countering the effect of evil thing so you cannot translate for god almighty deceiver you cannot call him almighty deceiver you said that why god did not give a, a, why god have to lie god did not lie god lie and deceive deception is for mus for people here in this world law we have to follow law god like god is not supposed to follow law god you cannot say god is a liar so, suppose a kills b b a is a murderer a kills b b a is a murderer if god kills b god is not a murderer you cannot call god murderer you cannot try god almighty in the court of law god does what he wants what he intends so if you want if, if you wanted to give confidence by showing them we less in number that is perfectly okay with god 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 does what he intends you cannot direct god why he god, god did not do this why god did that god, why he god, why he do that you can ask, go go back in the year after and ask god almighty why you did this and why you didn't do, why you didn't do that yeah guys uh, this uh, comparison with murder is a bad analogy because god owns life so if life comes from him he can take it but i want everyone to hear what he just said i want you to hear cuz this is a bad analogy it's a false analogy he just basically admit to you that god doesn't have a nature that he's bound to you see cuz god can mislead deceive or speak the truth he's above all that so further proof guys you heard it from his mouth further proof the god of the quran is not the god of the bible the god of the bible has a nature he is what he is unchangeably immutably he's the god of truth and he cannot be otherwise but guys you heard it from what he just said god is above all that he can do what he wants and if he's going to use makar you can't call him a liar because he's above that and it's a comparative statement so if these people plot and he plots against them see it's comparative let me now respond to that it's not simply allah plotting against those who plot which again leads to one question so here's my first question even in the verses let's go with the word plot it says they plotted and allah plotted when those people were plotting and you just admit you just said it yes it does mean deceive it does mean deceit and then uh, lane's lexicon and the muslim scholars they all say it means deceive however you cannot give that meaning when it's used to allah why not because you say so that's your problem if the word means deceive then it means deceive and if it's applied to your god then he's a deceiver but here's my question it says they plotted and allah plotted and allah is even better plotter than them because it says he's the best of all plotters now comparatively speaking what's the comparison these individuals are plotting for evil not good and allah is showing them up by saying he's going to plot in a way that makes their plotting look like nothing so it's not showing that allah doesn't plot using evil it shows that allah is 
better at using evil to plot and scheme than they are because he's the best of all deceivers. So the Quran is saying there's a group of deceivers. Allah happens to be among them, but he's the best of all of them. Wow, Allah, what a way to glorify yourself. You're boasting, hey, there are many people do makr, many people who use makr, but I'm the best among all of them. I out makr all of them. In that comparison, isn't it proof that Allah is using makr in the same way that those people are using makr? They're using it for evil. He's using it for evil to outdo their evil. That's number one. Number two, it's not simply comparative. It's not simply comparative because Allah didn't simply deceive unbelievers. It says he deceived your prophet. You don't like to use the term. Okay, let's put it aside. How do you explain that Allah shows your prophet a dream? And in the dream, he shows your prophet that they are fewer in number than they actually were. Because 843 says, had he had shown them to you as they were, you would have argued among yourselves. So why is Allah having to use trickery, plot against Muhammad and Muslims, lying to them because that's what it is. If they were more than what Muhammad saw, that means Allah showed Muhammad a lie. It's lying, you can try to deny it. Why would you do that to your prophet? Why not tell your prophet like God said to Gideon? God told him, reduce your soldiers to 300. A larger army, I just want 300 Israelites so when you defeat them, you'll know I gave you the victory, not the number of your men. Why couldn't Allah do that for Muhammad? Saying to Muhammad, Muhammad, they're much larger than you, but that's where you're gonna see my power. Because Allahu Akbar, I am greater than them. Why did he have to trick them into thinking they're less to get their confidence? Is that how weak your God is? To stoop to that level? To deceive his own messenger? And if he deceived his messenger, what proof do you have he hasn't deceived you?